get in focus click the links for alternative channels or support the channels through crypto or other various means um so yeah it was never about health ever not even from the beginning it was always about control um america was working towards something great all that is absolutely gone now so um aliens no tests required you know democrat or republican uh we're wasting all our times fighting among ourselves but it's it's wings of the same bird and uh, what do the puppet masters really fear well they fear us teaming up against them the haves versus the have-nots and i mean the real haves um, Americans don't rule America. Israeli and Chinese billionaires do. We're not a nation of one tribe. That ship has sailed a long time ago. And really, all this is deck chairs on the Titanic. I mean, I could do stories. I could do, if I, if at the time, I could do stories almost nonstop throughout the day. It would be nothing but deck chairs on the Titanic type of stories. I mean, eventually, I think I would go crazy if I did... Uh, too many of this type of stuff a day. I mean, yeah, I think it would it would make anyone a little batty if like if you were doing this nonstop to see like how something so amazing just turned to dog shit, and uh, and how few people want to save it. So, um, a nation with a one way border wall uh, that just turns into third world country very quickly, which is what we're seeing happen. The demographics have shifted so far since 1955 that there's no saving America, even if they wanted to, and not enough people want to. You just don't have the numbers. All the stuff you see now with the federal power grab, <clears throat> the experimental substance and the psychological manipulation behind that, the borders, the massive POC, Malum Prohibita and Malum in Se, criminal activity, the crowd's cleaning out stores and selling this stuff at their local swap meet which uh yeah they're they are, their in initial startup cost is zero because it's all stolen goods which causes the store's insurance to go up and um apparently these smooth brand midwits seem to think that insurance is magic um then what happens is the businesses the insurance rates adjust to be so high that it's prohibitive to do business so the businesses just go out of business they go to a digital form or they move further out or they just go under which means they fire the employees that were working there and um, those guys are out of work and then the area gets what's called retail deserts around um, high crime low trust areas where you can't find um, all of a sudden all the stores that were there are gone it's like well, why are they gone? Because the inhabitants chased them out. Um, and they also chased out the police. And we don't need police. We, we also are going to rob these places blind. So they left. Um, so you get, what, you get what you fucking deserve. So this is how the first world crumbles into the second world. The thing is, we're not a first world country. Um, Japan, uh, s some of the Scandinavian countries, you know, uh, are first world countries. South Korea, um... Some of the European countries are first world countries. America is actually, it's somewhere, it's somewhere between a first and second world country. At one time, it was a first world country compared to all the other countries. Um, and then America started slipping back into a second world country. And in in like Japan, South Korea, a lot of Europe, uh, it was firmly uh, went to establish themselves as first world countries. And that's a like funny thing that most Americans like, oh, America is such a rich country. No, the bankers and NGOs who have, um, they use their extractive economic techniques to act like parasites on America. They're wealthy. The average American, no, is not wealthy. So, um, demographics and allowing globalists to not just take part in the political spheres, but uh, to allow them into the country at all. If I was mein Führer, I would deport them all, and I would be deporting a lot of people. 
you gotta crack the shag shells to make the omelet. But unfortunately, I'm not in power. Globalists are in power, so uh, things are not going to change, except I suppose for the worse. So you know, if you wanted to get America back on track, you'd have to remove all gun laws. You'd have to allow store owners to delete the thieves as they saw them, and end the nanny state uh, welfare and open borders. You have to deport like 50 million people. Put the National Guard on the border and protect it by any means necessary. Enact the death penalty for many, many violent crimes. You know, things like armed robbery, home invasions, all that type of stuff would have to get the death penalty. That's what it would take to fix things. And you need to separate and do tribal affiliations for the protection of the different tribes. Because they really have different ways of doing things. It is, you know, focus, it is what it is. Um... So when I suggest these very reasonable things, I get called a monster. But for a situation this bad, it would take great and terrible things to fix it. Good intentions got us here, but it would take a river of blood to get us out. Well, the thing is, well-fed men don't really revolt. Um, they have less drive to revolt. Starving people, yeah, they got nothing to lose. So that's a long, long intro to say that these um, new Americans that are your replacements, um, they're coming here to take tax dollars from the middle class. Yes, your taxes will go up, as Biden has already said. Your taxes will be going up um, for many different things um, to pay for. Over their their lifetime, they average a negative of $750,000 over their lifetime that you, the middle class taxpayer, are paying for. <laughs> Haitians are not PhDs in physics. They take your tax dollars. They're what's known as parasitical losses. So you can enjoy those new taxes. You voted for the uh, puppet masters and you end up with the circus. Demographics have changed such that the high trust republic is over. We're in the direct democracy phase of Gibbs me dats. They want to tax unrealized capital gains. Um, immediately, like rhinos freak out and, and push back against it. The thing is, there's a whole other contingent of people who, you know, are laughing at the stock market, you know, money printer go broom. Um, I look at the, this sort of thing they're, they're pushing for communism, socialism, and say, go for it. Uh, it's it's too late to step on the brakes. You're not going to put this thing in reverse. You might as well accelerate. Uh, the demographics have changed America into a low-trust Brazil, South American type of state. America was a 80% European state, um, and it was that was back in 1955-ish, and it was it worked very well as a 50 to 60% euro state. It fails. Diversity has always been weakness. The goal was genocide the whole time. Now people are waking up, but it's too late. Uh, unless you want a Civil War Part 2 that would make Civil War Part 1 look like a walk in the park. Americans learned that diversity wasn't their strength after all. What I mean with the direct democracy uh, vote for bread and circuses is, is only one group of Americans wants to try to... Uh, give creating a nation a shot. The other 40% sort of view America as a commercial zone for free stuff. That I mean, taxpayer-funded stuff. That's why you saw the country collapse so fast. Because not enough people wanted to do what it takes to maintain a nation. In the back of their mind, they vaguely think the people of the light will always be there to run things and fix things. They don't understand, they do not understand that America has turned into Brazil because of demographics. If your representatives cared about this uh, Wu flu, they would not um, go to an event, mingle, drink. Uh, then when there's a photo op, put their masks on for the photo op and then immediately take them off. And the thing is, they're on camera the whole time. They know they're on camera the whole time. They also know their official photo op is going to have them with their masks in, uh, in it. And the thing is, the Twitter and all these YouTube is going to have them without their masks. But they also know that social media is covering for them. And they know the mainstream media is covering for them. So when Nancy Pelosi and AOC are doing this trick with their masks on, masks off, you get tweets that like this guy's tweet here, it has 79 likes. Well, if it was for, you know, 
last year and it was for Trump doing something similar or his family doing something similar, you'd be in the millions. So that like Nancy Pelosi, AOC, all these people, they know that Twitter is going to cover for them. That doesn't mean they're going to ban the thing outright, but it means it gets shadow banned. So instead of getting a million impressions, it gets a hundred. And the 90s used to talk about this military industrial complex. Well, it's, it's this social media, media government complex and they're on the same page and they're not on your page and like the far left and the far right are so busy fighting each other over shiny objects while while this kind of stuff is going on um obviously this doesn't make sense it would it would be a reasonably uh, prudent thing to do would be to test them i mean a reasonably prudent thing to do would be keep them out of the country in the first place because we have enough problems right now without Tens of thousands of other people. So what Biden did, did was he flew. There's like 15,000 people out there. So he flew a few hundred back. And the, a few thousand are just cruising through the United States going where they wish um, without any testing whatsoever. And it's like the testing isn't the sticking point. It's the letting them in the country in the first place. We literally have tent cities all throughout California all throughout all of America except where it's so cold like Montana is probably not a whole lot of tent cities because winter time we just wear them out but California, Oregon, Washington on the coasts and a lot of other places in America like we have a lot of problems we don't have and like nobody on the left the left the thing is like it doesn't matter who you vote for the left and the right they're both the same people essentially um and it's funny, like, a long time ago, the far left would have been the ones saying that, trying to convince me of this, like, a long time ago. The wings of the same bird concept. And now the right is finally, it's finally clicked, where you realize that, that like, your own Congress, it doesn't matter if they have an R or a D after your name, it's, they're not the same people. They have a different philosophy, to be fair, but they're not your people. That's why people talk, talk about, like, yeah, you gotta have a third position, uh, like an actual nationalist position. There's nobody in Congress any representative office who's a nationalist because if they were they wouldn't be allowed to be elected it's you know leaders are selected not elected anyway like comment subscribe and i will see you guys on odyssey bit shoot and whatever whatever other platform will have me